Well, my name is uh, Mary Colley Steerer. I'm the daughter of uh, Mary Clifford Colley, who was uh, uh, born in South Paris and really gave me part of my main route. My father was from Maine, too. Uh, I got to know quite a bit about my mother's family because uh, they're a great family for genealogy and have collected a lot of information. It's been fun for me to follow through with some of that history and then follow and then bring it up to date, uh, and be back in touch with various cousins of the Clifford family. Uh, the uh, mother had uh, six brothers and sisters. She was in the middle of that group and uh, it turned out to have lived the longest. She was 101 when she died and in 2000, 2000, um, having lived then in three centuries. Uh, much of the time when I was growing up in the Middle West, the only kind of contact we had with, with her family would be a visit back to Maine during the summer. And uh, as I was telling Michael, at Christmas time, the cousins exchanged Christmas gifts, always, I'm sure, under the supervision of their, of their parents. But uh, uh, the, the fun was, was to go back to Maine in the summertime. I was only six months old when uh, my uh, dad was offered a job in Cleveland, so that I'm, I'm a lot of Midwest in me, but the main roots have always remained. In the summers, during the first um, five years before my sister was born, mother would go back and stay in South Paris. With, uh, with in the old family home. The, uh, some of the sisters would be there and some of the brothers lived nearby. That's when I got to uh, uh, do things with Tommy and Helen Clifford. Later on, their younger brother, uh, Junior, uh, his name is Earl Clifford, uh, was born. But Tommy and Helen, and then Steve's daughter, Vivian, uh, who was just all of the, we were all within one year of, of each other in, in terms of birthdays. We would come to the farmhouse in South Paris. And uh, I can remember, and I was pretty little at the time because as I said, I was, I was under five, that um, uh, we would get rides on the hay rack with, with Grandpa Clifford. Uh, we would um, take naps in the afternoon down on the slope near Stony Brook, and, or Stony Creek, because it's Stony Brook. Stony Brook. And, uh, and then I could just, you know, I was pretty little, but uh, still I can remember that we would carry our blankets and spread them out on the pine needles. I don't know whether we really slept, but that was our quiet time, supposedly. Uh, we did, uh, we went swimming, I think in Stony Brook, but, uh, uh, also, there were times that we went down to Old Orchard because um, uh, Earl's wife, Marion's folks, had a uh, big restaurant down there. And uh, so we would go visit, and there are some pictures of our uh, being on the beach at Orchard, at Old Orchard, uh, in our kind of little old-fashioned bathing suits. And the women practically covered in theirs. <laughs> The, uh, some of the memories of those very early times were when I was probably the only grandchild actually staying in the, uh, in the farmhouse. Uh, my mother's mother, Grandma Aff Affia Clifford, was, was confined to her bed by that time. She had real severe anemia, and I never really saw much of her except that uh, there would be times that I would climb the the really wide front stairways with a broad railing and go stand by her bed. And you know, and she would just sort of acknowledge my presence there. So I never really knew her very well. Grandpa Clifford made more of the grandchildren and uh, uh, so was more of a person that I remember. That house not only had the front stairway, it had the back stairway, fairly narrow. And I used to uh, go down it 
sitting down and the ants, would, this would be Caroline and Anne, would laugh and say, that's the BTM trolley that you're taking. And, uh, you know, obviously um, they, they made a lot of the, the, the grandchild and uh, they, would, uh, they would give their grocery orders over the phone. And I would, um, I would repeat it after them and I would say, you know, six orange juices. <laughs> That's the one thing I remember because that was the way I would, would interpret what they were saying. I don't uh, remember a lot more about visiting that farm. There were times then as we grew up um, for the Depression when uh, my brother and sister were born that we would go back and we would visit uh, Tommy and Helen. Clifford, who still lived in South Paris, in the big old house on Pine Street, and and also at their at their uh, camp on Papoos Pond, so we did things. Tommy was just my age, and he always called me Mary Dibber. He, he, somehow or other, he could not say Mary Elizabeth, and I was Mary Elizabeth. There were so many Marys around. I mean, there was there was Aunt Mary, who was Affie's sister. There was my mother. And then here I, I was little Mary, but I was Mary Elizabeth, but I was Mary Dibber. And Tommy, till the day he died, would look at me with a twinkle in his eye and, and call me Mary Dibber. <laughs> the, um, um, the camp at Papoos Pond was a fun place to go because they had a, a, a rowboat, I think not a canoe, but a rowboat. And um, we, we always, um, traveled with our little uh, white dog so that I can remember having little Fluffy in the, in the, in the boat with us. I'll, I'll continue on with that um, George and, and um, yeah, uh, George and, uh, and Helen Millay um, stayed in that area, but down in, in, uh, in uh, George's hometown uh, of uh, Brunswick and Bodenham. So later on, with my husband Bob and I and our kids, we called on, on them and visited them almost every year in the fall and uh, uh, always had a lobster dinner. George always knew where to go down to the shore and knew the, knew the, the lobster place to, to, to get them. Uh, they had five or six, six children and uh, had, had built a, a home on uh, George Millay's family farm. His family owned quite a bit of land there. And uh, they built a home there, and another one of their daughters built a home there. Tom and, and Jeanette Clifford were in the area. We did not see as much of them, and I never knew their son. But uh, on occasion, we saw them. I lost touch with uh, Earl Clifford, their son, for quite a while, except at Christmas, uh, because he moved to Baton Rouge, Illinois, uh, Louisiana. Uh, among the other cousins, um, Vivian uh, would occasionally be in Maine, but we we all we visited them in um, in Connecticut, maybe as a family one or two times, but not, I, I just didn't see her a lot growing up. As I say, we did exchange Christmas gifts and wrote these little uh, perfunctory thank you notes, which was why I could remember the address on that, uh, where they lived. The um, other sibling of my mother's that had children was Bert, and um, he moved to New York State and lived in various places, uh, Aniata and uh, I can't remember where else. But, Glens Falls. Uh, but in, in then Glens Falls. And we would stop and, and see them once in a while. They had one son, Bob, who was quite a bit younger than I, so I, I did not see them. Little did I know that eventually we would live not too far from them. In fact, when we moved here, we stayed with Bert and Helen and uh, uh, the first couple of nights while we were waiting for our furniture to come from, from Pontiac, Michigan. This is to Troy, New York. 
and uh, they gave us, I think they gave us the first skis that, um, that we had. We never became big ski people, but uh, it was very popular. And when we arrived, we, we were told that everybody skis and goes to the hockey games, you know. Well, that, those were the people we met. But uh, Bob had gone to RPI, which is here in Troy, Wrestler Polytechnic Institute, married a girl who, from Glens Falls who went to Russell Sage, which is also in Troy. And then uh, uh, he, uh, he went with Texas Instruments. But the name of the man that started it was from RPI. I, don't, I can't remember his name now. And they, they moved to Texas. So rarely did I see them, but we did keep in touch with Bert and Helen. Another thing that happened was that Bert used to travel. Uh, he, he was with the Union Bag and Paper Company. And uh, when uh, Bob and I were living in Chicago, he would occasionally come there. And he would call us up and we would go down and have dinner with him. And so he, he was always a person that was one of the uncles that, that we knew. Of course I knew Anne, my mother, my mother's younger sister, because she lived with us. Uh, when I was growing up, after her mother died and she graduated from high school in South Paris, they uh, decided, the family, that what would be best for Annie would be to go live in Cleveland with my mother. All the rest of the family had gone to Bates College, but Anne went to uh, a Western Reserve at Denison University and then came and, and lived with us and uh, was like a big sister to me. She used to love to set my hair and do my nails. <laughs> I remember that. And, uh, um, and uh, she, uh, um, she, she was, of course, like a babysitter, too, some of the time. Uh, of the other siblings, um, Aunt Caroline, my mother's older sister, was, um, uh, they were fairly close. They were fairly close. And uh, she lived in New York City. I can remember that my mother would uh, um, send jars of homemade jelly to her, this woman who lived up in a, in a high rise in New York City. And uh, once, uh, and they would come visit us. They had no children, so they, they really enjoyed the nieces and nephews and kept track of them. The one time they came, uh, while Uncle Walter was a, an attorney, a practicing attorney with a fairly big firm in, in, in the city. And uh, while they were visiting us, the, um, the head lawyer in the firm was coming through and they stopped and they came with their chauffeur and their car, and they, they stopped in Cleveland Heights where we live. Well, this made a big impression. We didn't have too many people that stopped with their chauffeur-driven cars. <laughs> but, uh, uh, and, and we were duly impressed, although um, Caroline and Walter were not pretentious at all. Caroline was a, they remained Mainers, right? To, and she belonged to the Mayflower Society and the Maine Club. And, I remember her writing mother that, well, she had to entertain some people from the main club and she served them baked beans. <laughs> that was uh, her um, recognition that she, she was from Maine. The um, times that they did come often were Christmas, however. And uh, one time I can remember that um, I was upstairs, they were down in the living room Christmas Eve, and they were putting the presents out and everything. And this was the year that I had asked for a jigsaw, you know. Um, and I can, I, I just know, I could, they were laughing about trying to put it together. Well, I could hear, of course, we were always curious about what we were going to get for Christmas, and I can remember their laughing and having a good time trying to, to put that together. Um, but that's, as I say, uh, those are the times we saw them pretty much. I know that, that during the Depression, they, they helped my family out. We had a, it was a hard time. My dad was in and out of jobs, and, and, uh, and I, I think that they, they loaded mother some money, which was very welcome. Well, W.A. Uh, was the oldest in that family, Wallace uh, Alton Clifford. Uh, 
married to Barbara Marr, and they lived outside of the city in Mount Vernon, New York. Uh, both were in education. Barbara had been a music teacher and then became principal in a school there. And it got quite a bit of recognition. I think she really uh, uh, did, did an outstanding job at her, at, with her school. As I recall, they were all black students. And W.A. Uh, started as a teacher, but um, then branched into um, organization of the school boards and really was considered the founder of the State School Boards Association in, in New York. Well, he, they would travel and then they would send my folks their itinerary and it was kind of a joke. Of course, my father always thought all this genealogy was kind of a joke anyway and one of the favorite expressions in our house was, Oh yes, that was back in odd eight, he would say. Because <laughs> when Caroline and mother would get together, they would talk about the old times and all of the family members. Well, in any case, um, uh, WA organized this uh, State School Boards Association, which by the time I, we moved to, to um, Troy, New York, when Bob came as a city manager here, uh, was 1964 was quite a, a, a thriving organization and an important lobbyist in Albany. Education is always a big issue with the state legislature and, and what the uh, 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 allocations will be in the budget. Uh, in the, uh, the mid-70s, I became a member of the uh, Troy School Board and uh, uh, was eventually became known that it was my uncle who had started that organization and because I had a picture that they used on their wall for the founding members. Uh, I, of course, he, by that time he was no longer alive, but I always thought he would have probably enjoyed the, the fact that, that I was um, um, in that organization. Mother used to come and visit us in Troy uh, after my father died. Well, she. She, she came with him after he'd had a stroke and she would drive up from Florida. And they, and they visited early on while they were both healthy and traveling. But when she came later, she would always make a point of seeing Bert, her brother, up in Glens Falls. And according to Bert's wife, Helen, all, they, all Bert and the Mary did were talk about the old days in Maine and they would go over and over all of the things that they remembered and all the people they remembered and, and just had a, had a great time. So that there was a real bond among the family members. And uh, um, in the wintertime, uh, mother and dad would go and visit Caroline and Walter in Florida too when they lived in, uh, in Orlando. They had left New York City uh, after Walter had had a stroke and, and uh, it was predicted that I think he would only live a few years, but uh, uh, down there under her care and, and the climate and whatever, he lived quite a long time. And they would go down and, and visit uh, them in the, in the winter. As I say, the uh, Walter and, and Caroline and my folks got along very well. Uh, and, and, and they always enjoyed the family. One time, Bob and I had taken our kids down to Florida. We stopped by in Orlando to visit Caroline. And uh, she was just as nice to our kids and took them out and showed them the orange tree in the backyard and had said, well, we don't have a lot of room and you'll have to, uh, you'll have to uh, sleep in your sleeping bags on our back porch. Well, this was fine and our kids were little, so we did that. Can you stop for a minute? Sure. Yeah, it'll roll. <clears throat> well, why don't you uh, do a little bit on the Parsons ha farmhouse itself when you, you know, you're... Yeah. you're f well, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the farm up, you mean the, the big farm, the farm. Uh, I heard a lot about the farmhouse, the farm, because uh, my mother remembered very much going up there she, I think, probably more than any of the other uh, children uh, would be, was sent up there probably whenever there was a new baby. I mean, there were two children, well, there was uh, twice, um, but that was ex 
when a new baby was expected uh, at, uh, at, at home. And she said that uh, Aunt Dora took care of her. Aunt Dora was one of the Parsons sisters, the four of them, Afia being the oldest, and then Anne, and Dora, and, and Mary. And I think Dora was about 30 at the time and not married yet. And, uh, and so she was responsible for taking care of, uh, of my mother, who would have been, you know, pretty small at the time. Uh, uh, I think they were only, you know, under 10, certainly. And she would remember Uncle John, who lived there, uh, and was Dora's brother, and uh, uh, was kind of a loner and uh, uh, worked on the farm. Uh, he was also a nature lover, and he, he used to collect birds' eggs and, and save them, blow them out, you know, and carefully preserve them. I can't remember whether he did butterflies or not, but I don't remember be, being shown the, the, the birds' eggs in a, in a tall a cabinet that had drawers that pulled out. I don't know, do dentists have them? Or It seems to me some doctors have all their yeah, instruments some, and, and yeah, range and little, stuff. Yeah. And it was, it was that kind of a cabinet. It's still there. And, uh, um, and we, we got to see that. Uh, the, so that's what my mother would tell, and she would always tell about her grandfather, Stephen Robinson um, Parsons who would, didn't see him much except when he came to dinner. He always sat at the head of the table and said grace, and nobody ate you know, until he started, and a rather stern figure. But mother, mother was given his uh, violin at, a, at an early age, and she took lessons and played in her high school, her high school orchestra, and had had that violin for a long time afterwards. Uh, which I thought was a sort of another side of Stephen that I had never heard about, you know. Um, I can't, uh, the thing I remember about that farmhouse, one of them was, when Berta showed us around the kitchen where they had this big closet kind of place or cupboard where they stored the pies. And, uh, and of course they had a big wood stove at the time and they did cook on the hearth too some. Uh, this is Bob and I would visit Berna's when we went back later on when she was living there. Didn't get to know her very well when I was when I was younger. We didn't spend much time when, that I remember up the, at the farm then, but later on uh, uh, we did. And of course, especially when it was recognized as one of the uh, uh, you know outstanding uh, historic landmarks in Maine, and uh, and then when uh, Aunt Anna wrote the. The, the uh, history on the anniversary of the 150th, was there, the 100th, probably the 100th. And Anna Parsons, <coughs> whom I did not really know at all, um, but did a lot of writing. I, I felt like I knew her in some ways because she wrote up so much about the history of the farm and was sanitized it sometimes, but, uh, but uh, I don't recall in her writings that she ever said that they had a still there and that they, uh, they sold whiskey because they raised so many potatoes. And, and it was, it was uh, Mary Parsons, Jeff's wife, who it tells quite a bit about why during the War of 1812, when the, uh, the trade between Cuba and the States, uh, there, were, there was a three-way trade between slaves and rum and, and, uh, and, and, and um, uh, uh, well, I guess cotton goods and whatever. Um, existed. That was interrupted during the, the War of 1812. So the whiskey that uh, that was made locally had a good price and, and I think uh, that bank account went up quite a bit at the, at the time. The, um, um, the, uh, the, the one time we were back at the farm when Jeff and Mary were there and also um, Another um, cousin, Thomas uh, Parsons, who was Shirley's son, and his wife was, they were both there. And, uh, and we were shown around the farm and taken up to the attic. I was so interested in your, um, your um, uh, tape that you got up there. 
it's not arranged like a museum, I must say. It's like an attic. <laughs> but, uh, but Jeff did a very good job of showing us the old, um, the, uh, how they created the apples and stamped the, uh, the boxes and all that. And, uh, and some of that old, uh, um, some of the old implements and things they had. And also the view. The view from that, the roof of that, I mean, you can just see the white mountains and, and uh, it, was, it was really something. But that was a house, you know, where they had an organ in the downstairs living room and, uh, and they had that, those huge bedrooms upstairs with, with the dividing doors that dropped down from the ceiling, but they could be lifted up uh, so they could have dances there. Well, no wonder, they, what did they have, seven girls or something like that? It must have been quite a challenge to be sure that they had the social life and got married off. But that, that, was, that was a real experience uh, to, to go up there and see that. And that would have been the, the, the visit in 1978 when my mother was there and... Yes, and Vivian was there too. <coughs> we did, that was on my mother's uh, 80th birthday. And uh, because we, we lived here, and uh, I, of my family, I was the one who was most knowledgeable and the closest to Maine. By the time my brother and sister came along, uh, it wasn't long after that that the Depression started, and we didn't travel that much. So that um, they don't have the feeling of the ties to Maine that I do. But in any case, uh, when my mother was 80 in August of, of 78, we took a trip and, and we went to South Paris and we had such fun because mother showed us where to go and where the places that were important to her in her childhood. And we visited some of her old schoolmates and uh, we visited Bessie, who eventually became uh, Earl's second wife after Marion died. And we went to uh, Snow Falls, I think. And Vivian met us up there at Goodwin's Motel. And we went up to Perms, up at Trap Corner, where they have, the, it's, they have these local mines, and they uh, have gems, and, uh, and, and local, uh, well, you know, uh, stones that uh, they polish, and, and I, I remember your mother, Vivian, uh, having been there frequently and telling about how, she, you know, she had jewelry from there, and she bought jewelry as gifts from there, and so uh, that, was, that was a fun experience. Tourmalines, apparently, they do yeah, a lot of tourmalines. But they, well, I have a, a necklace that has a, seven or eight different local ones, and not only do they mine them, but this is a place where people can come and mine their own, but they have a gift shop. And, uh, and while we were at Goodwin's, Tom Clifford came down with, with Jeanette to visit us. And this was just not too long, uh, long before he, uh, before he uh, got sick and, and, and uh, after a kind of a prolonged illness uh, with, with lung cancer died. Um, and, and, and at that time we went up to the, uh, up to the farm. Uh, and, and, and visited Burnus, and, and Jeff and Mary were there. And, and Affia at that time, little Affia, was just you know like three or four years old, I 